Jack Zaleski on the opinion page area of the forum. Here to introduce to you a new feature that will be in the online forum and in the print version of the forum. It's called the Forum Face-Off. Our debaters on various subjects will be from the left, Linda Boyd Coates, and from the right, Scott Henning, two Fargo personalities I'm sure most of you know. Our topic for this first go-round will be what do the wealthy owe the nation? And I direct the search party. So uh, this is actually a new adventure for me. I'm not a political pundit, but uh, looking forward to talking with my my old buddy from the radio show. I know I have gray hair, but old buddies, huh? Yeah. We can start now. Well, well, he's already taken the sweet spot. Call me old. Those lefties, they just go at it. Actually, Linda and I have uh, sparred over the years on the radio talk shows that I've hosted and uh, always enjoyed our discussions. My name is Scott Hennon. I am a radio talk show host and, uh, and uh, have a website, scotthannon.com. wrote a book called Grassroots, A Common Sense Action Agenda for America, largely derived from my time on the Tea Party Trail. And uh, by the way, my show can be heard in the Red River Valley on 1310 a.m. and uh, at uh, scotthannon.com. And uh, I, too, am looking forward to the forum face-off where Linda and I are going to get a chance to go back and forth. And the topic we chose uh, for the first uh, forum face-off is what of the wealthy owe this country. Surely I didn't suggest that title because I think you know that suggests uh, that they aren't paying enough. And I happen to believe that the wealthy in this country are contributing mightily. In fact, uh, one of the reasons we're in the economic malaise we're in today is because there's a whole lot of capital sitting on the sidelines uh, afraid of uh, you know where this country is going. And they're right to be afraid because uh, between regulation and taxation and uh, taking this country in a completely different direction, the uncertainty is out there is incredible. I, I say often on the radio, who in their right mind would hire anybody? When you don't know what health care costs are going to be, if you're in agriculture or in the energy business, what the EPA is going to do to you. Uh, we have an incredible oil boom going on in North Dakota, for example, right now. The EPA, if you go look at their rulemaking plan, is planning rule after rule, billions and billions of dollars of more regulations of more government. And that's crazy. That's stifling our economy right now. I, I had a little fun with the column that uh, folks were reading in the uh, in the forum, and that is that you know, I put Brock and the IRS together, and I realized it sells there. And that's the mentality of the big government left. But if you go back and look at the, the worst six economic crises in America, and if you do that, look at the six worst up to the first one, the Obama uh, recession and economic crisis, you say every time they lower taxes, they cut spending, the economy took off, and the exact opposite happened. More spending, I, you know, example being Obama's stimulus plan, uh, higher taxes, you, you stagnate the economy. So the idea that somehow uh, we're going to tax uh, the wealthy, which very, very often the small businesses, the economic engine of America, they're the ones that create the jobs, tax them more to fund more government, and that's how it's somehow going to help the economy. Okay, we have a problem here. Let me fix it. Okay. Um, not all regulations are crazy. I think we already saw the finance and the uh, mortgage market deregulated. That resulted in some craziness as well. Um, the topic that was chosen, uh, kind of collaboratively, the wealthy owe America. This one immediately um, I believe that the wealthy owe America is what everybody else owes America. America. They want to pay they want to shut down fracking. And they owe it. They want to, they want to and what I would add to that is that what they also owe is what we all owe is to pay our fair share. So when you say that the top 1% of uh, wealthy folks in America pay 30% of the taxes, they actually have way more than 30% of the wealth. Um, the, the key word is fair. What's your fair share? What's my fair share? What's the fair share of the bottom 50% of working Americans that you say pay no taxes at all? Well, that's not true. They pay all sorts of taxes. They may not pay income tax because income tax was designed to be a progressive tax that would tax more heavily the people who can better afford to pay that kind of tax. But the kinds of taxes that the working poor and the middle class do pay and uh, takes a larger share of their income is payroll taxes, sales taxes, all sorts of taxes. When you characterize uh, the left as we just want to spend ourselves into oblivion and just uh, soak the rich people, um, it's kind of a straw man argument because I think when you have runaway spending that's not paid for, when you decide to fight two wars and not ask Americans to pay for it through their taxes, when you 
uh, cut taxes in the midst of uh, in the midst of those wars, and you allow deregulated, uh, bold regulated sectors to kind of plunge us into a recession. Um, that's I think where we get the spiraling down. So let's say you cut all that stuff, and you throw people into further poverty, homelessness. What happens to the kind of, of public institutions that business relies upon to be successful? They rely on an educated population. They rely on infrastructure. They rely on safe cities. Um, all those things happening in concert, in harmony, someone in my world might say. Um, so the wealthy benefit from the public fabric, being whole, being healthy. Uh, I don't recall, you know, the, the wealthy are paying their lowest taxes aggregate taxes than they have in 50 years. I don't remember seeing very wealthy people complaining during the Clinton years. Those were good years. And I don't recall people saying they were overtaxed or the business was suffering. Well, I, first of all, I would say the 90s was largely a, a, a boom of the, the tech boom. And it was largely, uh, you know, uh, a result of people taking their capital, investing it in companies and, and, yep. and, and jobs being hired. That's what the quote unquote wealthy do. They, I know that. They invest them in companies and they hire people. If you say, I want to take it so I can, you know, uh, create some government program or add to some government program, that just takes money out of the economy. There's that many less jobs to hire. It's like right now, all the regu regulatory uncertainty has all that capital sitting on the sidelines because they're saying, well, you know, wait a minute. Uh, what are my taxes going to be? What are my costs going to be? What is the regulation going to cost me? That's the biggest problem. I don't think that stores downtown are not hiring because they're wondering what their regulations are going to be coming down the pike. If there aren't customers walking in the door, it's because people don't have money to spend. So when people are looking for work, when people are struggling, when they say a rising tide lifts all boats, that's true if you don't keep poking holes in the smallest boats. So let's say that works. Let's say if you make life more and more and more difficult for the people at the bottom, are there going to be more customers coming in the store? You know what fixes all this? What fixes all this? More tax cuts? No, a growing economy. This economy is in worse shape as a result of more spending, more uncertainty, more okay, regulations. Okay, Scott, even Republicans understood that at the edge of the cliff we were on when Obama took office, I mean, the sky was literally falling. What, what they were saying to our elected leaders on both sides was this is a crisis like we've never seen before. And it's at that moment that the only entity that can step in and avert a Great Depression so is you, government spending. Do you think spending. the trillion was spent, well spent? I think we would be in worse shape if it wasn't. To me, it's a question of balance. I'm not saying all programs need to continue or we don't need to make sure we're spending our money wisely. I'm from the nonprofit sector. We squeeze every nickel. I understand that, and we look at every expense. But it has to be balanced with revenue as well. We're not going to cut our way out of this. Till next time. Till next time. Thanks.